Hi, I'm Tom Levis, product engineer for Panasonic Connect North America. Today we're going to be showing you how to do the audio-based preset follow built into our PTZ Control Center. So the first steps you're going to need to do is download PTZ Control Center from our PASS site. So go to the PASS site, go to our download section, and scroll down until you find the PTZ Control Center for Windows. Go ahead and download and install this software, and we'll get going from there. Once you've installed PTZ Control Center, go ahead and open the application. Here you'll be met with the login screen. The default username and password will both be admin with a capital A. Once you log in, the first things we're going to want to do are going to be to add cameras, create categories, and set up our plugins that allow us to use the audio-based presets. Let's start with adding cameras. Simply go to the gear in the top left corner, select camera, and then press add. Using the built-in auto search functionality, the software will automatically go and find cameras on the network. So let's go ahead and add the two cameras that we're using here. Once we've added our cameras, we're going to go ahead and create a category. Categories allow us to group cameras together. Think of this as a room or any groups of cameras that we're going to have working in the same space. So we'll go ahead and add, we'll create a category here, we'll call it classroom to kind of match with the classroom aesthetic we're using here. Then we're going to go ahead and add our cameras to the category. This will become more clear later about why we're creating this category. In order to activate the audio-based presets, we're going to have to add a license for the plugin. So from the menu, select plugin. Here you can see I'm already licensed. If you don't have a license, select the activation GUI to open the activation GUI. From here, if you've already purchased a key code, you can enter it with the activation button. Or if you just want to try the software, you can use the trial button for a free 90-day activation of the software. Once the software is activated, you may have to restart the software and or the computer to be able to get the activation to take place. We should see the status here of activated. Once the system is activated, we're now going to be able to add microphone base station to use for our audio follow presets. Under the system menu, you'll now see the addition of a wireless microphone unit. We can simply add the IP address of the microphone unit. Enter the port number, the default is 50003, and the password. The default password for the microphones is going to be admin with a capital A, followed by 12345. Now we can press connect automatically to make sure that the software will connect automatically to the camera next time it restarts. Press the connect button and look at the status to make sure that the microphone system is online. Now that we've added our cameras, created categories, installed the plugin, and set our system to connect directly to the microphone, now we can go ahead and create presets that we'll use to be triggered by the microphone. From the main tab, we can now see our two cameras here. So in this setup, we have a classroom with a whiteboard in the front, and maybe we want to look at the two front seats. So let's go ahead and move our cameras and create our presets to define where the preset recall will be. So just go ahead and use the built-in joystick and uh, controller here in the software to go ahead and create the presets. Hit the set button and select a preset. We'll do this for two presets that are going to match with two microphones we're going to use on the set. We'll go ahead and do the same with the second camera. The Visual Presets tab is where we'll go ahead and create our presets that we'll use for the audio-based preset. So here in the top left, you can see our category. As we said earlier, the categories allow us to define groups of cameras. This can be a space or a group of cameras that we're going to work together. So here you can see the classroom category I've created. You might be able to do this with multiple rooms where you can create multiple categories that define your different spaces. So once we've added the category, we're going to go ahead and add a background. 
So select background from the right side menu and then browse to find a picture to use as a background image. Here we're gonna use an actual image we've captured of the space we're in. You could also use flat imagery such as a 2D map or anything else that helps you define where those uh, positions of the cameras and the presets need to be. So let's go ahead, once we've added a background, we can now add a camera. So select the camera menu and hit add. Here we can select one of the two cameras that are associated with this category. And then we select a shape or position of the camera that we want it to be in and press OK. We can now move that camera to represent where in the space this camera is. This is useful where you might be calling presets that use some but not all cameras and it'll show you information such as tally and the last cameras to be called for a preset. So here we're going to place our two cameras kind of where they represent in the back of our room. Once we've created cameras, we can go ahead and add presets. So presets are gonna allow us to create a whole group of presets so we can have multiple cameras recall presets, as well as define which microphones are going to be used for those presets. So we'll go ahead and press add, and we can move our preset group uh, box to kind of represent where we want that preset to be recalled. So even if you're not using microphones, you can have a visual representation of where that preset is defined. We'll go ahead and put that in the right space. Then we'll right click on it to open up the menu for that preset group. At the top, we can give it a name. Call this seat one. Um, and we can define a microphone that's going to trigger that preset. So from here, we can drop down list. And for this, we'll use microphone one. We can set an audio level threshold as well. This will define how loud the sound has to be before it triggers the preset. We can also define a preset keep period, which will say how quickly we want to move between multiple presets to prevent the camera from going back and forth as multiple microphones are triggered. So here we're just going to use the default to show how this works. We can set a color to make it a little bit easier for us to define this preset. Um, and we can add a thumbnail if we'd like to give a more visual representation of what that preset defines. Once we have the initial preset block set up, we're gonna go ahead and add the actual camera presets. So from here, select Add, and then you'll select your camera from the top. Here we'll see a group of presets. Since this is gonna go to the first table, we'll select preset one. Press OK, and we're gonna go ahead and add a second camera as well because we've created two presets with both cameras. So select the second camera. Again, select the preset one that we've created here. Hit OK. Once we're happy with the presets, we'll hit exit here at the bottom and then OK on the left tab. Now you can see I've got some information on my preset group. The preset will automatically call once it's created, so you can see the yellow here showing both of my cameras have now moved. You'll also see a level meter here showing the audio levels. Right now there's no microphone, so nothing will be shown. Now we'll go ahead and create a second preset group to act as the second microphone position for preset recall. So again, put the system out and give it a name. And assign a microphone to it. Here we'll assign microphone number two. And we'll add the presets for our second seat. So now we have two preset groups that we can use to recall presets either with a mouse click, a screen touch, or a microphone. Let's see how that works. <laughs>